my name is uh, Jan Wildeboer. I work at uh, Red Hat as EMEA evangelist since uh, 15 years now. And I just wanted to give you uh, or share my, my sort of elevator pitch if you want to position free and open source software in any corporate environment or also in public environments. It doesn't really matter when people ask the question, you know, why should we care about this? And if speci uh, specifically, if you want to um, encourage them to allow uh, people to share with other people, because that's always the point. A lot of companies say like, oh my God, corporate secrets, we have to be very careful. So my shortest version is effectively this. Um, when you think about the world we live in today, then a few things have changed compared to maybe 20 years ago. Uh, the biggest change that we are experiencing is that hardware has become more or less irrelevant and everything, everything now more or less happens on the software layer. And when you work on the software layer, uh, you know, you need to have this kind of, of, of abstraction to even think about stuff like cloud or DevOps or all of this stuff. So. The software layer defines everything nowadays, software-defined networking, software-defined storage, etc. And when you look at a typical IT stack in this modern world, which is, you know, this size, this is your IT stack, then this is where things get interesting. And this is what I always point out. If you are a company and, you know, you're in a market and you're competing with other companies, then this IT stack in your vertical typically tends to be quite comparable to your direct competition because you work on the same laws, the same regulations. Um, so you tend to have a lot of parts working in the same way. And if you take a closer look, and this is what always you know, gives people this, this surprise moment, when we take a closer look, then we see that maybe you know, 10, 20% on top of this whole stack is stuff where you actually make money that is your secret sauce, that is the stuff that sets you apart from the rest, the stuff that you need to hide and keep secret. But that means logically, very simply, that 80% of this functionality in your mostly software-driven IT stack actually is non-competitive functionality. It is stuff that does not add to your margin. It's just stuff that you need in the broader sense. And that is exactly where open source and free software kicks in, because we built that 80% so that you can focus on that 20%. From a company organization perspective, this also means, should I really focus all my money on the 100% of that stack, when in reality, it's only the 20% that I really should care about? And doesn't it make far more sense to reach out to your direct competition even to work together on that 80%, because if I can get four companies to work together on whatever part in that 80%, our respective investment risk just dropped by 75% because we are now sharing this stuff and it's non-competitive, so we're not giving anything away. With this argument, with this 80-20 distribution of looking at stacks, it's a very general principle. It's a Pareto principle and you know it's, it's, it's nothing special but it helps in positioning what open source really means in IT. It's not necessarily the fancy, cool, whatever stuff, because that's not what open source works on. Open source works on the stuff that everybody needs, ideally, that can be shared freely, as freely as possible, and that adds to that 80% that we all need to build working stacks. Now, you can call this open stack, you can call this Kubernetes or whatever. Ultimately, all of these projects are working on the same thing. Standardize the hell out of the lower 80% and work together on that in a non-competitive way. I guess I'm almost perfectly on time. I still have 50, min 50 seconds left. So uh, with that, think about this as a way to position what we are doing in the world of open source and free software, how this explains a lot of things in a very simple way that makes it understandable to people who are not really deep into this. If you have any questions, you can meet me later on in the Spatial Lounge, or you can ask them right here. Thank you.